bicubic interpolation. Scaling images. How do you interpolate pixel values using bicubic interpolation? So last week we learned about image interpolation for raster images. We covered two algorithms. First, we covered the nearest neighbor, and then we covered bilinear interpolation. So for the nearest neighbor, we looked at the nearest pixel representative of where we currently stand. So we did something like this. We simply looked at the nearest pixel, and we just simply copied its color. Meanwhile, for bilinear interpolation, we performed a weighted average across different axes, first the x and then the y. So essentially we did something like align the best fit between two points. So by cubic interpolation, can we do better than align with best fit? So by cubic interpolation, it's an extension of cubic interpolation for interpolating data points. It's a smoother than the corresponding surface in bilinear or nearest neighbor. So how do you perform by cubic interpolation? You can perform it using either Lagrange polynomials, cubic splines, or a cubic convolution algorithm, which I won't cover. There's also some other techniques as well. So for Lagrange polynomials. To develop an intuition for Lagrange polynomials, we can look at this case for n equals 2. Effectively, we're given two points and we want to interpolate what a line the best fit would be between those two points. So here we have this point at y1 and y2, also at x1 and x2. We want to interpolate it. The intuition behind Lagrange is essentially creating smaller lines, then adding them together to create the line above. The way you add up the original lines is using this equation we see over here. Taking this equation, we essentially see how far along are we between these two different values. We get the fraction, such as am I halfway? And once I'm halfway, I simply multiply that by my y value. And in result, we get an equation like this. If you're interested in the multidimensional case, feel free to pause this video and you can see this larger equation. But essentially taking this equation and plugging in the values, you can get the end result for what would be the lowest degree that coincides with all the provided points, which is a very powerful theorem. On the other hand, we also have cubic splines. So what are cubic splines? So let k from x equals 0 to xm be a set of knots where a is less than x0 is less than x1, which is less than all the way up to xm, is equal to b. A function is defined as a cubic spline on a, b, if s is a cubic polynomial si in each interval xi to xi plus 1. In essence, we're breaking this down and stating that each one is a cubic polynomial on each subinterval. It is called a cubic interpolating spline if s of xi is equal to yi for given values yi. So effectively, you need to pass through each of the different knots in the final cubic spline. So there's several types of cubic splines. For example, we can have clamp splines where the derivative at each knot is zero. There's different types also, such as periodic splines, natural, or simple boundary conditions. So let's learn more about cubic splines. Cubic splines are interesting. Consider the case where we have our cubic equation ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, and then we also have its derivative. If we know the values between 0 and 1 at point x equals 0 and 1, as well as its derivatives, for example, the equation could be clamped, then we can accurately determine using this equation here what the values a, b, c, and d are. If we know what the values a, b, c, and d are, we can just simply generate our cubic spline. This is a very simple approach to generating an equation. Cubic interpolation between different points. How does bicubic interpolation fit in? So it's very similar to bilinear interpolation, how from two iterations, first on the horizontal and then on the y-axis. If you were to simply look over 16 points in a 4x4 grid, first perform the different interpolations horizontally, and then finally we perform interpolation on the vertical axis, and then we generate and get our final result over here. So why not always use bicubic interpolation? Bicubic interpolation falls victim to overshooting. For example, we can see in this diagram that we can overshoot past a boundary range. Let's say we're doing RGB colors in an image for resizing. If we pass 255 for R, G, or B, then we're going to have to clip it over at 255. So this can give some interesting results. Also for additional reading, you can learn about Bezier curves. So unlike interpolation algorithms, Bezier curves do not have to pass through the points. In fact, by definition, it's not considered an interpolation algorithm. Here's a simple demonstration of Bezier curves. If you're interested and want to read more, there's a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and subscribe to new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern.